live from Boulder, Colorado. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of Wall Street and Math Magic presented by Real Life Trading. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world, welcome to Kids Month. Every single March at Real Life Trading, we do our absolute best to reach out and educate some of the youth from around the world about the stock market and simply talk about how cool it is, how intriguing, and of course, how financially relevant it is to be a stock investor. So just to make sure everyone can hear me, I have Benjamin is already here, Christian, Dana, Diane, Evelyn, Jay, Kay, Kaz, Nathaniel, Phil, and Steve. Type in a one if you can find the chat pane okay, just to make sure that you all can hear me. And I'm also here with my good friend who's going to be helping me through the rest of these classes, the actual originator of the content, Mr. Joel Alconan. Joel, can you hear us okay? Yeah, how's everyone doing out there? Christian and Evelyn and uh, Dana, that's my daughter's name, Diane. How old are you guys? Uh, let's see some ages here. Can you guys type in your names? I got your names. What about your ages? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. So Evelyn is nine. Kai Demerit is 12. That's so exciting. I love that. Uh, we have Steven is here as well. Dana is 54, but young at heart. <laughs> I love it, Tana. Christian is nine. That's fantastic. Well, thank you for being here, Christian. Thank you for being here, Kai and Evelyn and Jay and Kaz and Nathaniel and everyone else who is here and anyone who might be watching this in a recorded session. I also truly do appreciate your time. Each one of these classes will be a nice, crisp 30 minutes. I know you're busy. I know you have a lot of things to catch up on, some homework to do, maybe some games to play. But we're going to do our absolute best over the next three classes to teach you some really useful information about Wall Street and the stock market. So, and I just I, I want to throw one thing in there. This is a really good class and everything, and you guys are going to learn a lot. But you still have to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I don't want Benjamin and uh, Christian. You guys still have to go to school tomorrow. Maybe after the third class. You won't need to go to school tomorrow, but you guys got to go tomorrow. At least at least this class. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, let's dive right in. And again, thank you everyone who is here. It means the world for all of us and for so many people who are here. So first and foremost, this particular class is entitled, What is Wall Street? You might have heard the term. It's even the name of a movie that you might not be allowed to watch yet, but maybe one day you'll be able to watch the movie called Wall Street, which is a stock market classic. And when you turn 18 or 17 or 16, your parents might let you watch the movie Wall Street. But Joel, can you tell everyone who's here, what is Wall Street exactly? Okay, Wall Street is a street in New York City, right? And uh, it, it houses the financial district. And what we mean by the financial district is where financial companies are located. Um, also, there's an exchange, and that's what you see to the left. That's a New York Stock Exchange. That's a picture of transactions being conducted through computers. And uh, believe it or not, I, a long time ago, uh, when I graduated from college, I worked on an exchange, and I worked in a pit that was a heck of a lot bigger than this one but uh wall street you can go you can go to wall street new york city you can get a tour of the new york stock exchange i don't know if you'll be able to get on the floor unless your parents know somebody but that's where financial firms are located a lot of their headquarters a lot of a lot of people that live in new york city work on wall street and uh you we also in the first picture we saw a picture of the bull, and you. When you're on Wall Street, you want you want to be bullish on the market. You want to see the market go up, and we didn't even put a picture of a bear in there. But uh, remember, next time you go to New York City, you got to have your parents take you to Wall Street. 
Joel, can you tell everyone while we're here, just a quick segue, can, why is it called a bull and a bear? You know what? They asked that question um, on, uh, on our show the other day, and I, I did not have the correct answer. Do you have the correct answer? <laughs> I don't know the exact correct answer, but I know that bulls attack from the ground up. So when you say that, like they're bullish, like they attack their prey from the ground up. So they throw their, you know, prey or whoever in the air and bears attack from the top down. So they kind of stand on their legs and they pull their prey mm -hmm. down. So okay. if you're if you're a giant bear, that, that's all I know. Is that the correct answer? I, I, I tell you, we did a little bit of research on it. And um, actually, I. Uh, there's a lot of animal terms used on Wall Street, but we're not going to go into all those, but we'll perhaps have a better answer for you tomorrow on uh, bull versus bear on Wall Street. But we want you guys to be bulls. And then uh, also, you know, there are bull markets and bear markets. That's something we'll cover in another class. Uh, but uh, the important thing to know is where is Wall Street? And a couple people have been there. That's great. I hope you all get an opportunity to visit Wall Street sometime. I totally agree. So, David, that's very cool that you've already been to Wall Street. I love it. We're going to now talk about Wall Street and just a little bit of math. I know that a lot of you might be going through school and you might be participating in some math classes. And for some of you, math might either be your favorite subject or your least favorite subject. So for all of those people who are here now, type in, what is your favorite subject in school? Does anyone have a favorite subject? It might be math, maybe it's science, maybe it's history. It might be, my, my favorite was cafeteria. Uh, I'm going to put mine in there and I bet you you're going to like it. Recess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have recess anymore, Joel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Kai's favorite class is math. All right, beautiful. Well, Kai, I am going to lean on you for some incredible answers because we're gonna be talking about math over the next three classes and really how it can be used to understand the markets, how it can be used to understand the financial movements of a particular stock. But more importantly, boys and girls, the information that we're gonna cover the next three classes will in the future hopefully help make you money. Yeah, that's the goal. So you can buy some games or maybe some really nice cars or hopefully buy some stocks, invest in some real estate, buy some assets that grow over time so that you can make a lot more money as you get older. So we're going to talk about some Wall Street and math. Here we go. We're going to go look at some exact examples of how math is used specifically in and on Wall Street. So here's going to be three examples that we're going to be doing over the next three classes. This particular class, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is class number one. So what we're going to do together is we're going to pretend that everyone here owns part of a company. And that company is going to be called RLT World. So this is class one. That's what we're going to be discussing in this particular webinar. And then tomorrow, for those who are here live, we're going to be talking about class two, and we're going to pretend that you're going to buy a stock in a company. And then in class three, we're going to be pretending that you're going to buy a mutual fund. Woo! Mutual funds. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about what a mutual fund is, how they look. And the cool part about this, boys and girls, is by the end of this class, you might know more about the stock market than some of your teachers. That's going to be really exciting. All right. So class one, that's this class. We're going to be talking about RLT world. So Joel, I'm going to let you cover this particular slide for me. Okay. Uh, helping a company raise money. And this company is RLT world. And Jeremy and I have created a company that uh, helps people or helps children get educated on the stock market, right? So uh, Jeremy and I have found some investors, right? We need money to start the business. We have a little bit of money, but we're going to be, we're going to need more money to start our business, right? So what we have to do is we have to come up with a business plan and we have to go talk to those firms on Wall Street. 
And we talked to them about raising money through giving up part of our ownership in the company. And for this example, we are going to sell 300 shares of RLT World to the public, maybe to you guys or to your parents. So this is a way that we can raise money besides our own money, you know, because when a company starts out, right, there's expenses. We may want to do some advertising. We may want to have webinars and buy computers. So we need money. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to raise money through selling 300 shares of our company. And this is something, boys and girls, that happens all the time. So again, a company, it can be, this is obviously kind of a fictitious example, but you can pretend that you want to create a company. Whatever that company is, it can be any kind of company at all, but this is something that happens all the time where companies need to raise money, and in order to raise money, they go and get help from Wall Street. So some of you already mentioned in the chat pane that math is your favorite, ex uh, favorite class so what we're going to do is some quick math right now. So here's a quick assumption. This is example number one. So there's 200 children that each invest $10. And overall, RLT World needs a total of $3,000. So how much additional money is needed? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to launch a poll for everyone who is here. So if you want to go ahead and select this poll, boys and girls, you can interact with the screen. If you're on an iPad or a phone or a computer, you should be able to click it. How much additional money is needed if 200 of you beautiful people want to invest $10 each, hypothetically, in this made-up example? Oh, man. Joel, look, we might need harder math. Oh, you're kidding me. 100% correct. Every single person who no voted way. got it right. <laughs> and I, and I was going to I was going to say that you had to do okay, another question here. What kind of you had to do two kinds of math there, right? What two kinds of math did you guys yeah, and you guys are smart and you did it in your head. But what two different uh, areas of math did you use to come up with that? Shoot, I don't even know if I know that answer. <laughs> I think it was uh, some multiplication and subtraction. Exactly. Because okay. 200 times 10 is 2,000. So we have $2,000 uh, in the coffers, but we need 3,000. So 3,000 minus 2,000 equals 1,000. And you guys are amazing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you do get to take the day off school tomorrow. <laughs> Great job, boys and girls. Very well done. I love that. So let's now talk about we need an additional $1,000. So RLT World sells additional stock, and we're going to sell that to, let's say, your parents and the other people that want to invest in the company. Now, this is going to be another question for each and every one of you. At what price would RLT World have to sell each share of stock if the Wall Street firm charged $1 per share of stock. So remember, we know that we're selling 300 shares and you have already bought 200 and you need $1,000 to go. So this is going to be a little bit harder math, but I'd be really excited to know if you all can get this one. So this one, go ahead and just throw it into the chat pane. At what price would RLT World have to sell each share of stock if the Wall Street firm charged $1 per share? All right, so Benjamin has a, an answer in the chat pane. Thank you, Benjamin, for participating. I appreciate it. Christian is throwing in a number as well. Dana is throwing in a number as well. Kaz is throwing in a number as well. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss how much it would be needed. So here are the answers to both questions. And I'm gonna let Joel take over this particular slide. Okay, uh, once again, we're using a couple different examples of math here. Here is the information that we have. 200 kids have already invested $10. So 200 times 10 
equals 2,000, right? Now we're going to use a little bit of subtraction. We need $3,000 and we have $2,000. So 3,000 minus 2,000 equals 1,000, correct? But you got to keep in mind here, going back to the beginning of our slide, Wall Street firm that's going to help us do this, it's going to help us market it, help us find investors, is going to charge us $11 per share, right? So 11 times 100 equals 1100. The one times the 100 equals the Wall Street fee. The 1100 minus 100 equals the, cap the capital that we needed, which is 1000. So now you go back, you put all the math together, 2,000 plus 1,000 equals 3,000. That was the funds that we needed after we paid the Wall Street firm. Wall Street firms do not do this for nothing. So there is the quick math on that. Did I, did I go through it a little bit too quickly, uh, Jeremy, or do you, do you want to go over that again? I think you nailed it. Uh, absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of remind everyone, so that Wall Street this particular firm, they're out to make money as well, right? And in order to make money, they're going to charge a particular fee. So remember, we were initially selling each share for $10. Do you all remember that? So we were going to sell each one for $10. Well, Wall Street was going to charge an additional $1 per share. So since the Wall Street firm receives dollar per share, we're going to need to do at least, the answer is $11 per share times 100 additional shares. So the Wall Street firm in this example would make $100, that's their commission, and this particular $1,100 bucks is, uh, the $100 is the Wall Street fee, this $1,000 is the additional capital raised from other investors. So remember, this could be your parents, this could be your uh, friend, this could be your teachers. So 200 kids invested in RLT World at $10 per share, and then an additional 100 shares needed to be sold to other people, and the Wall Street firm helped with that. Does that all make sense? Any questions on that? And we're going to yep. do, uh, does anyone else want another example of that particular math? Because again, this is something that happens. Maybe one day you're going to have a company and you're going to sell shares of your company and you're going to have to do this exact type of transaction. So let's, let's practice it again. So we're going to do this one because Benjamin said he wants some more examples of this. So let's practice it one more time. And uh, this is a different assumption. So now what we're doing is we're going to just simply change some of the numbers. So now, let's say instead of 200, we only had 100 children and they invested $5 instead of 10. So they invested $5 instead of 10. Now, the one thing that was kept the same is that RLT World still needed $3,000. So remember, when you create a company, you're going to need, as Joel was saying earlier, advertising, maybe you're going to need some computers, maybe you're going to need to hire someone to help you. If you're doing a lawn care company, you're gonna need lawn mowers to cut the grass, you're going to need something to pull the lawn mowers with, so you're going to need material and material costs money. But the good news, boys and girls, is money grows on trees. So we have the ability to go get as much money as we need to in these examples. So I'm gonna do another poll. If RLT World needs $3,000 and 100 kids invested $5 each, how much additional money is needed? So here is the second poll, and I'm really excited to see if we all get 100% again because I'm letting each and every one of you know, if I did this exact same question with 100 adults, they would not all get this correct. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, Joel? <laughs> That's correct. And now, once again, uh, when you're doing this, if you're doing this in your head or you're doing this uh, on paper, 
you got to use two different uh, uh, tenets of math. First, you need to use the multiplication to find out how much money you have to start the company. And then you need to take that amount, the money that you've raised originally, and subtract that from what is needed. How do we how do we do, Jeremy? This was great. So we had another fantastic result. 90% of you got it correct, and the one adult in the room got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the correct answer is $2,500 because if 100 kids each invest $5, that is $500, and $3,000 minus Five hundred dollars is twenty five hundred dollars. So again, congrats! Congratulations! That is an amazing, amazing. Can show. you write that out, Jeremy? Can you write that on there? Maybe just to the side of the three thousand. The uh, that the way the, the process in which you did that. Easy. So one hundred times five equals five hundred dollars. And if three thousand dollars is needed, you would take three thousand and then you would subtract five hundred, and that would come up with. $2,500. So again, boys and girls, congratulations. I love it. Now, what we're going to do, keep in mind, is we're going to do the exact same question as before, but a little bit different. So now, at what price would RLT World have to sell each share of stock if the Wall Street firm charged $1.50 per share of stock? This is going to be a little bit harder because, again, we have $2,500 that's needed, and we still have 200 additional shares that need to be sold as well. So we're going to go and look at the answer for that particular question, and Joel is going to give you again a breakdown of the answers from the previous slide. Okay, so let's take the information that we already have 100 kids are investing five dollars 100 times five equals 500 correct so that is what we're starting out with now we know that the company needs to get started for expenses we need a total of three thousand dollars so we know we already brought 500 in three thousand minus 500 equals two thousand five hundred right so also, we know that we're going to have to pay Wall Street, right? So at $14 per share times 200 equals the 2800 because we are going to have to pay Wall Street $300 to do this transaction. So Wall Street receives their fee of $1.50 per share. We are only selling 200 shares, and this is putting all the math together. So the buck 50 per share times 200 equals $300, correct? Yep. All right, 2,800 uh, is brought into the company, but we have to pay Wall Street $300. So 2,800 minus 300 equals 2,500. So we have our new investors and we have our new money and we needed a total of $3,000. So we raised the 2,500 plus the 500 we already have in Presto. We have $3,000 to start our company. Bam, beautiful job, Joel. Again, wonderful explanation. Boys and girls from around the world, what's really exciting right now is this is a global event. So some of you might be in Connecticut, some of you might be in California, some of you might be in Thailand, some of you might be in Australia. And for those who are watching the recorded version, I appreciate you watching this as well. This is something that companies go through all the time. Wall Street will charge a certain amount of money per share to help them go out and sell those shares. Because when they sell those shares, they get some type of reward for buying them. People get a reward for buying shares. We're going to be talking about that in class number two and in class number three, which is just going to be a mere 24 hours from right now for those who are here live. But before we stop, so David says, where does the $14 come from? 
So a very good question. So this particular math of the $14 per share, you can derive that simply from the fact that we needed to sell the additional 200 shares. And if Wall Street was going to charge $1.50 per share at 200 shares, that means that Wall Street is going to get $300. So if we needed $300 total, and we had, so $300 was the Wall Street, we needed $2,500, that's $2,800, right? So when we have $2,800, what is $2,800 divided by? 200. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will give you the $14 per share. Bingo. Yep. That's what's really cool about math is very frequently you can do it all kinds of different directions. You can do multiplication. You can do division. Oftentimes, you're going to want to make sure that you have uh, the, the proof. A lot of teachers will probably talk about that, at doing it multiple times. So, yep. The thing is, we knew this number for sure, right? We knew how many additional shares were needed. We knew this number for sure right here. So once we did this math and we understand that that 300, then the 2,500, we knew that for sure was needed. So then you just simply divide it out of that and all is good. David says, thank you. No, my pleasure. What I want to commend you on, David, is I appreciate that you and Nathaniel both asked to explain where the $14 came from. That's a very, very important thing for the rest of your life is do not ever be afraid to ask any question. If you don't understand something, it doesn't matter if it's a Wall Street class, if it's math at school, if it's calculus, if it's science, or if it's history, be the person who asks the best questions, and you will become the person that has the best answers. And so, boys, go ahead, Joel. No, and I, I just wanted to uh, add on top of this that, uh, you know, I know a lot of you guys are and gals are from the uh, 8 to 12-year-old uh, uh, age group. But uh, not a lot of these things are taught in, in elementary school and even junior high or high school. And this is a, a pretty advanced concept here, but we wanted to start out with this because we wanted to be clear with the math. But this is something that you should uh, you should think about. Uh, maybe when you go look at the tape again, give yourself some different examples and uh, change the prices around on, on your own and just keep practicing it. Because a lot of times we, when you're learning, you could be told, but when you actually do it on your own and you write it out with pencil and paper, it sticks in your brain. So you guys are really moving ahead, Jeremy. I, I didn't think these kids, these kids are incredible here. Uh, learning incredible. about, yep, learning about wall street math here. Uh, well, here we are. We're going to wrap things up here for the, uh, for the yep. first session. Go ahead, Jeremy. That is 30 minutes, David and Evelyn and Nathaniel. That is exactly 30 minutes. Does anyone have <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Benjamin has a question. Benjamin, what a great question. So Benjamin <laughs> says, what are candlesticks? So Benjamin, let me go show you what a candlestick looks like really quick. So candlesticks uh, were created uh, by the Japanese rice traders back in 1400s. And a candlestick that you might see your mom or your dad have on their computer screens at all times, Benjamin, candlesticks represent four specific points of price on a particular stock. So we're going to talk about stock in the next class, which is class number two. But since you asked, let me go ahead and pull up a particular company. Um, are you familiar with McDonald's, Benjamin? <laughs> of course you're familiar with McDonald's. Everyone knows McDonald's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up McDonald's and I'm going to look at a candlestick chart. So this that you're seeing right in front of you, Benjamin, is a candlestick chart. And you are absolutely correct. The four prices of a candlestick chart is the open, which is at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. And then you have the close, which is 4 p.m. Eastern. And then you have the high of the day, which comes in whenever. And then you have the low of the day, which comes in whenever during those sessions. And once you can properly 
understand what these candlesticks mean, each one has a particular meaning and very similar to how you can read the letters on the screen that I'm writing, I love cheesecake. Just like you can read that terminology in English, I can help people look at these particular candles, look at these charts, and be able to read it left to right, just like it is a word on the screen. So once you learn enough about candlesticks, you can have a really good idea and interpretation of where a stock and a company might go in the future. Uh, Benjamin, Benjamin, how old are you? That is, uh, that's a pretty good question here. And uh, I'll tell you, Jeremy, I don't know enough about 11 years old. Boy, I'll tell you, Jeremy, what are you doing to candlestick class for kids? Because I got to learn more about candles. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is, Benjamin, at 11 years old, I think that's one of the greatest questions I've ever heard from an 11 year old. Oh, I do. But number two, um, the good news is, Benjamin, not only do kids, should they should learn what candlesticks are, but they uh, should be taught to adults as well. So let me test you really quick, Benjamin. What direction is McDonald's going right now? This is the stock chart on McDonald's. What direction is McDonald's going? Up, down, or sideways? Kaz, David, both got it correct. Benjamin got it correct. Look how easy that is, Joel. <laughs> but you got it. I, I should have signed up for this class earlier. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're good. Uh, Evelyn raised her hand. You can get to that real quick, Jeremy. But, uh, the, you know, when Jeremy asked you what direction the stock is going, you guys got to remember this word. It's called the trend. The trend, this trending in the direction, it's trending up. That means it has its ups and downs, but the overall trend is up. So when you're looking at the markets, the trend is your friend, and we'll cover that in another class. But uh, get to Evelyn's question there, uh, Jeremy, and then we can uh, wrap things up. Beautiful. I love it. So, Evelyn, if you raise your hand, what question did you have for me, Rockstar? More than happy to help. And if anyone has any other questions, feel free to let me know. Um, Evelyn says, what do the E's mean at the bottom of the chart? So I uh, I don't know why I have these on the screen, but the E's are earnings. So what happens, Evelyn, is actually very, very cool. Every, th every four months, a public company like McDonald's will tell everyone in the world how much money they are making. Isn't that cool? So every four months, a company will tell everyone how much money they are making. And let's talk about it this way, Evelyn. If we know that a company is making a lot of money, right? They're making a lot of money every three to four months. Do you think that could be a good company to buy shares of? And I think the answer is yes. So like McDonald's, if you go back in time and back in 2011, McDonald's is making you know hundreds of millions of dollars every single week. Then you go, yeah, this is going to be a really good company to buy into. Benjamin says, do you guys know what the 930 system is? 930. I'm not 100% sure what the 930 system is. We're getting stumped here by, uh, <laughs> by uh, Benjamin. Uh, just real quick, uh, just going back to this example about the earnings. If you guys are investors in real life trading world, you're, you're going to want to know how your, your, investor, your investment is doing. And uh, we, could, we could wrap it up after this, but we give the company, will release the earnings. And what a lot of jobs are created on Wall Street are analyzing these companies. And that's all they do, all their homework every night is looking at McDonald's and looking at their sales. And are they opening new stores? Are they uh, closing some stores? So that is a part of the job of Wall Street is to analyze what these companies are doing and recommend them to investors. Yep. Very good questions, boys and girls. I absolutely love it. I hope you were all back next uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night, same time, same place. Ask your parents questions. Bring us questions. More questions, the better. 
I absolutely love it. You are all amazing. Have a wonderful night. Sleep well. And we will see each and every one of you all tomorrow at uh, the same exact time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. Folks from around the world, boys and girls, you're absolutely amazing. And until next time, love life, live life, and trade it.